Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Spill the Lychee Tea. My name is Tranley, and yeah, I'm the host. Um, and yeah, on this channel, we talk a lot about like true crimes, unsolved mysteries, ghosts, paranormal activities, stuff like that, you know, like stuff that is like unsolved and kind of like curious. And today, um, we're going to talk about a story that is called um, The Watcher or The Watcher of Westfield. Um, probably a lot of like stuff that you can find online about this. It's also a very recent thing, which is, uh, which is really cool, I think. At the same time, it's also very, very scary to think about it. But um, it happened... Uh, it, like it started in 2014 and um, as of 2017 it was like still ongoing and um, I found a few like footages I guess uh, or not footages but like I found a few things about like it still being um, not really solved um, so yeah my hair is really weird today so I keep messing around with it um yeah other than that yeah like um yeah another tuesday another episode um a bit late of an episode like um normally i record on sundays and then on mondays i release it on patreon before i edit it and then i edit it and then i release it on tuesday um if you follow social media like my twitter and my my discord you know that i've been having a hard time after easter because of like uh, taking up extra work and stuff like that so it's been really hard to like keep the schedule so um actually this is being recorded on tuesday a few hours before release and um yeah i uh, i ask um that you guys be understanding yeah you can see outside like normally i record when it's like dark at 11 p.m today i'm recording at uh, 4 p.m uh but yeah so Let's get into the story. So, the Watcher is the name of a stalker or stalkers who was active as recently as 2017. Why I used stalkers like in the plural version, we can discuss that like a bit later. Um, so, in June 2014, uh, Maria Broadus and her husband, Derek Broadus, and uh, their three young children were preparing to move into 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. Um, it is only a few blocks away from Maria's childhood home. And yeah, it's 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 for her, it's a dream come true to like return to the city or town where she um, where she grew up and live there with her family. Um, just by the way. <laughs> It's also my first time that I have like a script um, for one of these videos. Um, not like a, you have to read down from this. It's more like notes, right? Like they're like notes that I can like use when I like lose my track. Um, so about Westfield in New Jersey, it is um, according to Wikipedia, uh, it is the 30th safest town in America. It is the town with the 18th highest income in New Jersey and the 99th highest income in the whole of US. There are around 30,000 people living there, so it's like it's not really a city, it's not it's it's not like a village, but it's like a smaller town. Um, it does have like good infrastructural um, connections to bigger cities inside of New Jersey though. But like overall it is uh, a rather small town. A mere three days after closing the sale for 657 Boulevard, um, the Broadus family uh, received a letter in the mailbox. And it said as follows. To the new owner, dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. How did you end up here? Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? 
657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now. And as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My father, my grandfather, watched the house in the 1920s. And my father watched it in the 1960s. It is now my time. Who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out any of the windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. You have children. I've seen them. So far I think there are three that I have counted. Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. This is an excerpt of the first letter that arrived um, and was received by the broadest family. Um, it is it is not as creepy yet, and at least in the excerpt that we got from the like as the public, there's not like a really big sign that like this letter could have addressed to be like to anyone, right? Like it wasn't like broadest family, like to the broadest family. It was like to the new owners of Six Five Seven Boulevard. So it's it, it's like kind of like a shot in the dark it's not like yo we like we know who you are right we we just um we just i don't know like we're just addressing this to like someone who's going to live here right so there's not like a lot of information yet so they don't know the name of the or they are not saying the name of the family yet they're not saying the um, name of the children or anything so there's no sign or clue that they actually know who is inside yet all right um yeah after after receiving that note of course the broadest family like they message um, and get into contact with the sellers, the the former owners, John and Andrea Woods. Um, they ask them like, "Hey, did you get like letters like that?" And they say like, "We like we lived here for like twenty ish years, and we have never received any of like any letters of this kind, other than like a week before we sold this house to you." But we thought it was a prank, so we just threw it away, kind of thing. Which is, I, I think, like, to some extent, it's understandable. They are trying to, like, they are trying to um, sell the house. So they're obviously not going to be like, yo, um, like, there's a creepy dude stalking the property. And he might, like, do something. <laughs> Right, so they're not like telling them, but like they, they're like, okay, you know what? We received a letter like one week before we sold it to you guys. You received a letter three days after um, you you bought the property. Let's go to the police. So both families together go to the police and they report the incident. The police urges them to not tell anyone other than like them because like they know about it already. Um, but like don't tell anyone in the neighborhood because the police assumes that anyone in this neighborhood in in the vicinity of like 657 um, Boulevard uh, could have could have been um, the suspect the stalker um, Two weeks later a new letter arrives um, containing more details about the couple and the family including their children's birth order and even the nicknames and due to this letter, the broadest family decided not to move into the house anymore. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all of the secret it holds yet? 
will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you could never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic? Or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who's in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. Several weeks later, after uh, that letter, a third letter has arrived. But before we go on to the third letter, let us talk a bit about like the the second letter. Um, again, like this is only what it has been made public. But like apparently in this letter, there were like they were already addressed as like the broadest family, the children like he or they revealed the stalker, the watcher. They revealed informations about like the children, what their nicknames were and stuff like that. I think this is where it starts to get like super creepy because like you you get that first letter and you're like, okay, this is maybe a prank. Like someone is like, like someone is just having like a joke, like is getting a laugh out of this on the cost of like the broadest family, right? But the second letter, like having the nicknames and stuff like that, that means that, means that they listened like they were in the immediate vicinity like finding out about the names like the birth names is like already super creepy but it's like possible for example i don't know for like a grocery uh shop cashier like maybe he's just like sitting there and then like the mother says the name or something and they like okay you know what but like yeah no like I don't know man like the nicknames that's like really close right like that's that's really hard to like it's hard to not freak out when you have like stuff like that happening to your family right so yeah so um the second letter gets really personal and um they really get into the get into the skin of uh maria and derek brothers uh, but yeah, let's let's go to the third letter. Where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. Again, this is just what like is public, I guess. Um, but yeah, so after the third letter, like they try or during the third letter, like maybe before or after the third letter, the Broadus family, obviously they're not moving in anymore and they are trying to sell the house because you know, because of the whole watcher thing, it's making them really uncomfortable. It's making them not want to like move into the into the house. So they try to sell, but by this point, information about this has spread like wildfire. Um, a journalist made a like a story out of this. It became like an internet phenomenon, and um, yeah, so like or like everyone already knew about like six five seven Boulevard, so. Um, they're not able to like sell it and then they try to like demolish the house to sell a plot of land but they were quickly denied and like maybe after the last letter before we jump into like the suspects i will like try and like say why um why i think um why i think that like at the beginning I said stalker or stalkers and I will try to explain what I like mean with that I guess. Um But yeah, so two weeks um Yeah, oh no, sorry. Sorry. So okay, so they appeal to the town board to demolish the house so, and and like just sell the plot of land without any house without anything. They just wanted to sell the house clean off. Right, without anything, without a house, without nothing, just a plot of land. So they appealed to the town board to demolish the house and build like two separate new houses on the plot of land, but it was denied because like there was like three inch missing or something. I don't know, like I didn't really understand that because like I don't use the imperial system, I'm not US American, so I don't really know about that. But, um, but yeah, so it was denied by the like the town board. And so they were not able to like demolish it and like sell the plot of land. Good for them though, 
In 2016, another family rented the house from the Broaddus' family, um, but they insisted on a clause in the contract that would let them go if another letter arrived, which is like understandable, right? Like you're going there and you know, like you heard the stories about the letter and stuff like that. So, so you want to have like an easy out, right? Like because the like honestly, the, I can understand like if the Broaddus were like, yo, you you got that? Like, oh, you get, you're getting letters? Yeah, haha. Too bad for you. We dealt with this for like almost two years now. We don't give a shit, right? But like. I can understand like the new family being like, yo, we heard about this. The, the house is beautiful and we really want to live here, but you know, like give us a clause and contract. So I, I, I absolutely get that. Like, I think everyone would like understand this, right? So they, so they rent the house, they get into it. And um, yeah, of course, two weeks later, a new letter arrives. To the vile and spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers of the Boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher. Maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet, loved ones suddenly die, planes and cars and bicycles crash, bones break. You are despised by the house and the watcher Now this is this is where it like gets weird, I guess, right? Um, so what I'm saying is like, like in this letter, it sounds like, like the watch is not just a single entity or a single person that is trying to keep them from, from coming in, right? Like they are, like he, like they are talking about um, my soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher. Like, it sounds like it's a group of people then, right? Like, they are not talking about them as a single person anymore, which they did in the first, sorry, which they did in the first two letters, right? But now it's like, we did this. We we defended this. And in the first two letters, it's like, it's not like about defending the property. It's not about defending 657 Boulevard. It's about the young blood that is led into the house and they are like, oh, we will do something to your children. Of course, like the ultimate goal is probably to scare the Broadduses away, but like they are like, oh, the house craves your, like, welcome, come into the house, bring your children. We will kidnap them. We will kill them. Right, like that's the the tone that the watcher has in the first two letters. But like in the third letter, it's like we survived. Six five seven Boulevard survived your attempted assault, and like it's very disrespectful. It starts off with the to the violent, spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife Maria. Like that's not how it started. It was like it was like oh, like you're a family of like you know like you have three children. Like what brought you here? Know, is it like did you find any secrets of the house yet right like in a creepy but very respectful tone and like the last or the third letter is more like yo get the fuck out of here basically right like you're gonna die um, kind of kind of vibes so so it's very different and that's why i'm like talking about like maybe it's not just one watcher but maybe it's like a group of watchers or maybe the watcher has like a group behind them right so um i will probably elaborate on this like theory a bit later on because now we're like going to get into like the suspects right like the official suspects that the police has like considered as the watcher um All right, so the first suspect is a person called the Gamer. We'll just call them the Gamer. Obviously, they didn't release uh, the name of this person because this person, uh, spoiler, <laughs> was never like really considered like in the cl 
closer um, like selection as the watcher but the first suspect we call them the gamer um, so at night what uh, in one of the nights a young woman parked her unknown car like unknown to the town unknown to the police close to the pro property of 657 Boulevard um, and the police questioned her right she said that her boyfriend lived close like in the same street in the same um, block uh, as 657 Boulevard and she was questioned if she knew about the watchers she said yeah I guess I heard of it right like and and like okay so like do you like have like do you know maybe like has your boyfriend been suspicious is he like you know like has he been like watching other people and she was like oh yeah like my boyfriend he plays like some pretty dark video games right and um in one of them like my boyfriend plays a character called the watcher right so the police ask the gamer like they drive to his house and they're like yo like dude um, can we ask you some questions at the police station? Um, can we record a testimony? Um, but like, it's it's not like a... Sorry. It's not like a official hearing or something like that. It's just like, yo, can we ask some questions? Um, and he first, he says yes, but he just never comes. So like, they don't have any evidence that's leading to him. They don't have any like suspicions it's it's just that the girlfriend like was at the wrong time uh at the wrong place right so so they're like they like let it go they're like we can't do anything like what are we supposed to do right and um i mean it's not like a crime that the home of the gamer is like on the same block as 657 boulevard like like what's he supposed to do and also like since like she was talking about like the watcher like what I what I think and I think what a lot of people think it's like maybe maybe she misremembered and it was like actually the Witcher that he played like the, yeah that's like kind of a dark game where you like also sometimes like stalk people like you 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 have to get close to them and steal something from them or assassinate them right like there are a few quests like that in the game and maybe she like mistook the Witcher as like the watcher like it sounds similar i guess and, like the police would know right like i i imagine like a if it was like a bigger city i guess like with younger policemen yeah okay but like in a in a in a town with like thirty thousand people i imagine like the police officers being like rather old as well like 30 40 ish and not like that much into like video games so so i can imagine like them just like not knowing about the witcher and like oh yeah the watcher okay like if there's a video game because like i at least for me i don't know a game where you play someone called the watcher um, or a game that's called the watcher like there are a few games like Watch Dogs, maybe that like would get close to it when it comes to the name but i don't think so all right so that's the gamer uh suspect Let's go to a different suspect, the second suspect. And the second suspect is another neighbor, obviously, like, it's it's really, like, in the neighborhood. It has to be someone in the neighborhood because, like, because they know 657 Boulevard that well, right? So the second suspect is another neighbor called Michael Langford. Michael Langford and the Langfords, like, Langford family, lived in a house right next door. Um, and so they would have been able to like watch 657 Boulevard like right from their property. Um, like it's it's the next it's a house next door basically. And so so why Michael, right? <laughs> it's a good question, right? Um, the Langford family itself was known around the town, um, and they were known to be like kind of weird, but like generally harmless. Like yeah, they're like kind of weird, but like they wouldn't like stalk or kidnap or kill anyone. Um, so Michael, why Michael? Michael was especially known to be like really special. Um, and he was also known to like spook new neighbors with odd behavior. Um, like for example, he would walk through their yards and peek through windows, right? Um, and 
that's just like like that's like watcher behavior i guess right like imagine like what like seeing someone like walking around and like peeking through the window and being like yo i'm watching you right like that's that's like peak top-notch watcher behavior i guess um and yeah just uh sorry i'm <laughs> just looking if the camera is like lagging or something but i guess it's not um, but yeah, so so he's like peeking through the window and just imagine like the, I think one of my biggest like fears and I, I'm so grateful that I live I personally live on the second floor of a building. But one of my biggest fears is that I like game, for example, like there's there's the window, right? There's the window. And like imagine gaming and then like turning around to like open the window or something. And the first thing that you see is like someone looking through your window in the creepiest way possible. I think the creepiest way would not just be like someone watching, like, but like someone like grinning and watching, like, and just like, like moving from left to right slightly, just slightly, just enough that you notice, but not like, not strongly, but just like enough that you noticed. You know, like, that would be one of the creepiest things ever. Um, funny thing, when I, I, when I lived in this town before I went to the military, I actually lived in a room that was on the first floor. And that is actually something that, like, my friends often did. So, I lived close to, like, a fitness studio, and, like, two of my friends, they would, like, go to the fitness studio, and then afterwards they would, like, I don't know, visit me for whatever reason. Mostly because they wanted to eat, I guess. Um, so they would come and like most of the times they would like like ring the bell, right? But that one time um, one of my friends like I was playing on my PC window on the same side, right side of me I was just playing games and like he didn't knock or did nothing. I just turned around and he was like, he was like, like doing this motion so that like he could see through the glass and just watching me play computer, like play games. And I was like, dude, what the heck are you doing? Like I opened the window like, and I was like, I was so shocked. Like I fell from my chair and I was like, dude, but then I like realized that it was my friend and I was like, dude, what like what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, oh yeah, I, I was just like watching you play. And I was like, why didn't you ring the bell? And he was like, oh, I am still waiting for the second friend like to arrive. And then when he's here, I would have rung the like rang the bell so that we both can enter. So you don't have to like open the door twice. That was his like entire that was his entire explanation as to why was behaving like a creepy stalker right but yeah i don't know it was like but yeah that's like one of my biggest fears right so i can see like how they're like oh michael like he has that weird behavior that like he goes to like other new people people's uh window through their yard and like just peers through the through the window i guess so i can see how the police was like Let's uh let's uh, take a closer look at this boy. Right. So the question, Michael Langford, after the first letter, um, and because of this, um, people really doubt that he also wrote like the second and third letter because, because like he was already questioned. Like imagine being on the sus suspect list of the police and continuing doing the thing you're suspected of doing, like. That would be so ballsy. So so a lot of people are like, yeah, no, he like he does not have the capabilities to do that, like to pull that one off, right? And a lot of people were like vouching for him, like, yo, like he is strange, but he's very harmless. Like he never did anything before. Um, and this dude is also like, he's already in his 60s, right? He still lives with his mom. I don't know how old his mom was, it's like 90 or something, but like, he was already like in his 60s so like he was kind of weird but like everyone kind of knew him already um 
but yeah so also on one of the letters um after the first letter there was dna found which was suspected to be from a woman so they were like okay maybe it was not michael langford maybe it was his sister so he has a sister um and so they do a dna test of the woman uh, of the sister um and all the other langfords and the dna is not like um, from the langford family the family was ruled out as the possible uh, culprit um and yeah like this is like the best i guess or like like because like hearing about like michael langfield you you would think like okay that's it like it's him obviously like it the person is called the watcher he likes to watch people new people and scare them right walk through their like yard watch through like peer through their windows and watch them do stuff like come on like that is that's just like the prime suspect right and yeah but so the dna was found on the letter um from a possibly from a woman but like it was none of the langfords so the last of the um suspects that the police had was the broadest family themselves um because even though the broadest family did not move into the house after the first or second letter they kept renovating and investing into the house right and a lot of neighbors were like why do you keep investing in a house if you are not going to like move in like where's the benefit you even applied to tear down the place and split it into two houses like why do you keep investing into the house right if if you're not going to do anything with it so they invest 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 they get new renters and um yeah also a lot of like the neighbors also suspected that they wanted the media attention like they made the whole thing up and then contact the journalist that like wrote an article about 657 boulevard and the watcher like that was like basically like they gave the information to this person to the journalist to write a story about it so they wanted the media attention they wanted the story to blow up and it was like a ploy for the uh, Bro uh, Broadus's family to gain money and fame. Um, and it is supported by the fact that the family did gain a lot of media attention and the, the neighborhood did gain a lot of media attention. And even, uh, and the family even got um, an offer for from Hollywood for a movie about the 657 Boulevard and The Watcher. And national and international attention uh i looked it up the movie is released so there has been a movie that has been made about this story it has been released so there's like it, it is possible right it is possible though it is hard to believe and they were never like convicted or anything but it is hard to believe that the family would make su up such a story um without either the police or any of the neighbors like catching them in the act because like at the end of the day they did not move in so they would have to like like drive there or like somehow get to there to to westfield to Bolo uh, 657 boulevard and put the letters in themselves e like either by car or like on foot i don't know but like someone would have like caught them right so so um yeah not a lot of people believe it and there's also like reports about the family having to consult therapists and psychologists uh, because of the stress that this whole matter has brought them right so they like basically they were like like they lost several court cases they they uh, were not allowed to uh, tear down the building because of the town board and all that st stuff um one thing that I have not written down, but I read about it is, for example, I'm sorry. Derek wrote a letter um, to the neighbors, to, to like several of the neighbors. And it was like, like the, the sender was named friend of the broadest family. It was by Derek and it was like proven by Derek. And he like had to explain himself in front of the police but he said like hey this is like the only letter that i 
that I wrote and it was like after after we tried like we applied for like tearing down the buildings and the town board like declined it I was so frustrated and like the whole thing like got to me and my family that we that I wanted to scare other people off and it was like basically a letter that said like friends of the broadest family like if you don't change your vote in the town board that the house is allowed to be torn down um like there will be several consequences but it was like it was not in the style of the watcher and no one no one really believes that like because it would like why would he change his tone from like the watcher to like friend of the broadest's family like he he could easily have made those letters in the way of a watcher as well right so it's not believed and it's like seen as like a desperate act to like get himself out of this situation so um yeah it is it is very and very and highly unlikely that like the broadest family themselves were trying to 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 get the case here um to 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 be the to be the watcher right at the end of the day this case is still not solved um not many suspects have appeared aside from the ones that i just mentioned and the case is still fairly recent so there may be more information to be revealed um like if you think about it like the case was semi-closed or like um kind of lost media attention in 2017 it's 2022 like that's five years ago there are other unsolved cases that are like that have been unsolved for way longer right so um five years is is not that much to be honest and there might be more information to come more information that already has been gathered but is not made public yet right like if it's like an ongoing investigation i would have to look it up like i don't know if it's still an ongoing investigation but if it were to be a still ongoing investigation and if they had like new information about what happened and stuff like that they would not um give that to the public immediately right they would wait for it so maybe there has been more information now talking after like talking about all this what is what is my take on this all right we have like five minutes left so what's my take on this now this might be like a silent hill like we talk about silent hill here <laughs> a lot i guess um because like it's just it's just like a prime example of like a um, horror story or horror scenario i guess in in a smaller town um so like like if you guys know silent hill or maybe the movie hot fuzz um it might be that there's something like this kind of situation because because so derek wrote his letter to if to like this is my understanding of the situation derek wrote the letters to like the neighbors like friends of the broadest's family before the third letter because he was trying to sway the vote in the town board to his family's um, side. So he was trying to intimidate them, possibly. Right? And he's like, yo, like, we're gonna do, like, stuff because we're Broadduses, you know, like, Broaddus family. Let's go. And, and after that, the third letter becomes much more aggressive and it's, like, very defensive. Like, we are the watcher. We won my like my 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 pawns right like it starts to the violent spiteful derek uh 657 boulevard survived your attempted assault the attempted assault i assume is the tearing down of the building that has stood there for 110 years as stated in the first letter so so the watcher is like yo we want to keep this building and you tried to tear it down but we stopped it we survived your attempted assault and we stood strong with its army of supporters which i believe are the people in the town board that voted against it right barricading its gates my soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a t now soldiers of the boulevard for me is like yo the people in the boulevard are on on this matter right like maybe the langfields like maybe for example 
like the nicknames of the the children and stuff like that maybe that information was gathered by the langfields and by michael langfield maybe the gamer did have like a part in this but it was like a group of people instead of just one person the watcher because like by the time of the third letter it's like all hail the watcher like maybe it's like one person who instigated the whole thing but it's more like the whole group like maybe the whole town but like more likely at least the neighborhood was in on the matter like they were like guys we're gonna do this we're not gonna harm anyone but we don't want this brodesses here maria said that she grew up in this town we do not know about her past we do not know about her family's connection to this town maybe like her parents moved away from westfield because this neighborhood was like very volatile and very um aggressive towards them right maybe they moved away because of that or maybe it's like it might be that there's like a cult kind of thing like in silent hill again and they're like yo we need to get out of this and now that like someone's coming back like they talk about secrets that are like buried in 657 boulevard right like maybe they're like secrets that they are trying to protect themselves so um so yeah like again like at the beginning i said like stalker or stalkers maybe so i think like again it's 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 not that it's it's not that like weird to think about it like that like a neighborhood could be like in on this like um i think these kind of situations or not like this specific situation but like neighborhoods having like a strong community sense and being very skeptic of outsiders we know this there are like there are movies about that you know like oh a new family moving to a town everyone's like looking at them like i don't trust these new ones right like and and like everyone's like like i don't know the family's like hey like do you guys want to come over we have like coffee and cake and like people are like, like spitting to the side Pah. nah we don't like your kind here you know and, like walking past them stuff like that right so it's 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 possible right there are like in my town which has like 25 to 40 thousand um people living there we we have like um we have like a suburban area i would call it and it really it it's not a closed gated community but it really feels like it they got their own supermarket like they're like it's this their supermarket like of the same supermarket brand i think like 500 meters away from that is another supermarket from the same brand and but like obviously the the other one is like it's it only has one like entrance like the other supermarket has like two entrances from two different streets so that like a lot of people can like get there right but like the supermarket from like the the I, I guess i call it closed community i guess it's it's really just like you can only enter it from the closed community right so it's kind of weird so i can kind of understand that there's like this this like i can see i can i i could see them having like a cold slash secret community thing going and they were all in on the washer thing they were all yo let's get these broadesses out of here let's wait for one of our people to come back and like the woods being like yo if we don't if we don't talk about it like they will allow us to like leave the cult and if we like if we talk too much about it like we're gonna be the next one so we're not gonna like talk about it or anything um i don't know something like that maybe it's it's difficult to like judge and again it's like still an ongoing thing it's an unsolved case so that's just a theory a game theory <laughs> but yeah so yeah that's 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 about it that's the watcher um of westfield that's the story the watcher of westfield unsolved case 
um thank you guys so much for listening and yeah let me know in the comments down below if you're watching on youtube let me know um down in the comments below um uh, what you're furious about the watcher um and uh, you can also research it yourself obviously um leave a like and subscribe and if you're like from spotify or any of the other sites where i have the podcast on like apple apple podcast google podcast amazon music um then uh, feel free to to subscribe on your respective platforms so that you don't miss um so far we have not missed any of the uh of the scheduled dates yet but uh, i hope i can keep this up i really do because it's really fun like I was so stressed. I was so stressed to keep the deadline today because I really wanted to. I really wanted to because like this 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 podcast like is also like a form of self oh, <laughs> sorry. It's also like a form of like self-expression for me, so it's like kind of like my way to to do art. So I really enjoyed it even though like I was so stressed I was like writing down the script because I I really wanted to have like a script where I could like um again if I lose like track I could like use it to like um get back on track um and have like a more consistent kind of story also instead of like reading all the letters at once which was like my last videos like modus operandi was like reading the entire story and then making like a few comments i like read the first letter gave a few comments read the second letter gave a few comments you know so possibly going to like keep that style um i already have like a, a story in mind for for uh next week so yeah i will probably work on that soon and again thank you guys so much for listening it really means a lot i get a lot of messages um for the amount of people that are listening and watching um, I get a lot of like messages um, that encourage me to keep going, and again, this is also like a form of expressing myself. So thank you guys so much um, for listening in. Uh, it's been some tough two weeks. I haven't been streaming in two um, in two weeks, but creating YouTube videos like this and the podcast is really important for me. So yeah, have a have a great day. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and see you guys next week. Goodbye.